Li Lu is the Chinese Warren Buffett. Right now, these are the top stocks he owns. Li Lu has a $20 billion stock portfolio in Himalaya Capital Management. The fund's most recent 13F filing made with the SEC revealed its top investments, which are somewhat unique in that they include both household names like Google, and he owns less heard of companies like East West Bank Corp, the only US bank with a Chinese banking license. These are the top stocks held by Li Lu at Himalaya Capital Management at the end of the fourth quarter 2024. Let's look at his US listed stocks first before we dig into some of the foreign companies Li Lu's invested in. Li Lu has six major US holdings that make up $2 billion of the portfolio. This is just 10% of the overall assets he manages. As a standalone position, Bank of America stock ticker BAC is the largest holding. It's the biggest holding, making up 29% of what's on his 13F. He's added to Bank of America a few times in the last handful of years, making his biggest buy during the pandemic stock market crash in 2020. While not a home run investment, Li Lu's made money buying into Bank of America, which is also one of Warren Buffett's top positions. As one of the largest U.S. banks with a $265 billion market cap, it's owned by a lot of super investors. Based on analyst price targets of $38 per share, it looks like there's still some upside for Bank of America. Li Lu's next stock investment in Alphabet is a twofer. He owns both classes of Alphabet stock, which combined make up 38% of the stocks listed in his 13F. These shares are worth more than $800 million together. Like Bank of America, Alphabet is another household name as the parent company of Google. Similar to Bank of America, he's added in multiple quarters to both Alphabet's A and Class C stocks. Interesting to point out, he was buying different shares in different quarters. This means he's likely taking advantage of price differences and purchasing whichever is cheaper at that particular time. Li Lu's investment in the $1.8 trillion business has worked out better than Bank of America. While it's also held by a number of other super investors, Li Lu is still up more than 40% on his positions. Even with that gain, a DCF analysis gives a 20% upside with a $172 current fair value for Alphabet. Analysts are also bullish, but a little bit less so. They have a 13.5% upside with a $164 price target. Berkshire Hathaway is the next largest position for Li Lu. This makes up a $375 million investment. So far, he only added to the company once in the third quarter of 2021. Since then, his investment is up more than 50%, which is crushing the market. It goes to show you Li Lu isn't afraid to take advantage of mispricings even in huge companies. The $900 million company is managed by Warren Buffett, one of Li Lu's close mentors. In fact, while he was studying at Columbia University, he listened to a lecture from Warren Buffett that inspired him to invest in his first stocks. Before he graduated from Columbia, he was already a millionaire thanks to his investments. Li Lu was even the top candidate to take over for Warren Buffett as an investor at Berkshire Hathaway once Warren Buffett would retire or pass away. But Li Lu decided not to pursue the top investing job. Instead, choosing to continue to run his own fund, Himalaya Capital. Given the recent big rise in Berkshire's stock price, analysts today put a price target of $444 per share on the company's B stock. Li Lu's fifth largest holding and the company he's most recently been adding to is East West Bank Corp. He owns 2% of the business worth more than $200 million. He first started buying in following some of the bank failures that happened in early 2023. Since then, this investment has performed quite well for Li Lu. While it's lesser known and not necessarily a household name compared to the other stocks he's in, East West Bank Corp has a $10 billion market cap. It's still owned by a number of other super investors. And based on estimates, it still looks like there's quite a bit of upside in the business. It's given a $104 current fair value with a 44% upside. East West Bank Corp is unique in that it's based in California, but it holds a Chinese banking license, making it the only U.S. bank to do so. Li Lu's final U.S. holding before we get to some of his international investments is Apple. This comes in at just 6.5% of the portfolio listed in his 13F. Still, it makes up a $140 million position that's done quite well since buying it in just one quarter back in 2020. His stake in its stock price alone is up more than 50%. Relative to his entire portfolio, Apple as a $2.85 trillion company is just a tiny percentage of it. It's nowhere near the stake it holds in Warren Buffett's portfolio, where it makes up nearly 50%. Based on a discounted cash flow analysis today, Apple looks to be about fairly valued. 
Analysts, however, think that there's a bit more upside in Apple with a $206 price target, giving it a 13% upside overall. So these are the stocks listed in Lilu's 13F that are most commonly reported for him as an investor. But there are more companies he has investments in that aren't disclosed here. We'll analyze the business we know Lilu owns in China before we discuss some that he may also have positions in. Postal Savings Bank of China is a company Lilu holds a 1.5% investment in. We know this as of the company's 2022 annual report to shareholders. Unless he's changed his position since it was published in April of 2023, Li Lu likely still holds this investment. Though it's not a guarantee. Postal Savings Bank is the fifth largest bank in China and it has a dominant rural presence. A valuation for it today comes in at around $19 per share, significantly up from its $10.5 share price. If Li Lu still owns 1.5% of this $52 billion company, his position comes in at around $800 million. This is pretty similar to his allocation in Alphabet, giving him around a 4% position in his portfolio. The next Chinese stock we know Li Lu has owned in the past is BYD, or Build Your Dreams. This $68 billion company is the top electric vehicle manufacturer in China. Li Lu felt so strongly about this business and its co-founder, he convinced Charlie Munger, who in turn convinced Warren Buffett to invest into the company. From their initial investments, this has been a home run. While there are other Chinese companies he's owned in the past, including Mao Tai and Alibaba, Tencent's another company that he may own today. This $350 billion Chinese internet giant is the owner of WeChat, a number of gaming companies, and it has big investments in some of the leading tech companies worldwide. The reason Li Lu may own Tencent is that his self-proclaimed hero and huge mentor on his life, Charlie Munger, made one of his final investments for the Daily Journal Corporation in Tencent's Hong Kong listed shares. This is in contrast in how Charlie Munger invested into Alibaba, which was much more publicized in the US due to its ADR listing. Right now, Tencent's US traded shares have a fair value of around $49 per share. The company seems to look cheap on a number of valuation metrics. There are other companies Lilu's owned and sold out of in the past. This includes Chinese social media company Weibo, Meta Platforms, formerly Facebook, which he added to and sold out of quite a few times, Chinese software publisher Sinacorp, Chinese search engine Baidu, Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba, which he was buying and selling in 2020, Chinese e-commerce upstart Pinduoduo, which he bought into and then sold out of, probably at a loss, and most recently Micron, which he had collaborated on a position with with Monish Pabrai. While not a recommendation nor investment advice, Li Lu offers a wealth of knowledge and deserves to be studied through some of the articles he has written, and I'd encourage you to check out his interviews as well. Check out our next Super Investor Portfolio Deep Dive.